Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a mysterious cubic equation. Why is it mysterious? I'll tell you in a little bit. Now, this equation is basically 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. And I'll be presenting at least two methods. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. I'm going to go ahead and basically put everything on the same side, or maybe not even that, I'll keep it this way, but I'd like to multiply both sides by 2, and I'll tell you why. Multiply by 2, you'll get this. And the reason why I multiply both sides by 2 is because this now is a perfect cube. You see, when it's 4x cubed, I can't really use the same idea. Now, this is 2x to the third power. So what? Now, from here, we can get 2x to the second power, but that just gives me 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. I will need an additional 3, which is okay. I can just insert it in there. And then here, finally, I need a 2x again. Everything is in, expressed in terms of 2x. I would need a 4 to multiply to make it 8x. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of balancing it out. But notice I didn't multiply both sides by something. I just rearranged the terms. Or wrote them in a different way, rewrote them. Now, why did we do this? Because I'm about to use the best, one of my favorite methods, which is substitution. Did you know that? So let's go ahead and replace 2x with y. Of course, that has to be everywhere. And this gives us a monic equation, a cubic monic, monic cubic, okay? Which is good. Now, here's what you need to do next. We're gonna be solving this in an Italian way because one of those Italian guys, who knows who, right? Discovered this formula many years ago. It's called the cubic formula. You can look it up. Now, here's the idea. We're going to replace y with something so that we can turn it into an equation without the radical. Not the radical, sorry. The right term is the quadratic. So we want to replace y with something. You could also do this, though. You can kind of write it uh, in a different way because... This kind of looks like a perfect cube, doesn't it? Well, pretty close. Look, you can write this as y cubed minus 3y squared plus 3y plus y. By the way, 4y can be broken down into this. And then you can go ahead and subtract one from both sides, but put the minus 1 here and subtract one from the 2. Did that make sense at all? I hope so. Now, what happens is we can actually bring down the 1 over here. So this becomes y cubed minus 3y squared plus 3y. And then you'll get minus 1 plus y minus 1. This 1, you're going to bring it equals 0. Now, why is that important? Now, take a look. This is a perfect cube. Hopefully, you recognize that, right? It's y minus 1 to the third power. But I'll tell you the alternative. You may not see this all the time. Uh, oops, that's not a square, it's a first power, but I wanted to put it in parentheses to emphasize a point here. My point is y minus 1 is going to be a common factor, therefore y equals 1 is definitely a solution. Now, if you didn't get that, you could also approach it slightly differently. Now, take it from here. Let me go ahead and erase this area so we can kind of use this, but let's keep uh, the final equation because we're going to need it. Now, we can actually go ahead and do this too. Replace y with z, I can't use x because that's something else, uh, maybe not z because z is reserved for complex numbers, right? I have another channel, by the way, did you know, called a plus bi, which focuses on complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. Now, what we can do is maybe we can replace y with u plus 1, and here's how you find this number. u is just another variable, but which number to add is uh, you take this number, and multiply by negative, uh, sorry, not multiply, divide by negative 3, okay? That coefficient divide by negative 3 is going to give you the number to add. So when you place y with u plus 1, you get u plus 1 cubed, minus 3 times u plus 1 squared, plus 4 times u plus 1 equals 2. And then when you expand it, a lot of things are going to cancel out, giving you a really, really simple solution. Go ahead and do that as an exercise and let me know what you get, okay? Now here, we can do this y minus 1 will be factored out, and then inside we're going to have y minus 1 squared plus 1 equals 0. You probably know that this has no real solutions, and in this channel, we're dealing with real numbers because a plus bi focuses on complex numbers more, but, but sometimes you get complex solutions here as well, right? 
Uh, sometimes. So, but let's still solve it. So from here, uh, immediately we get y equals 1, but our goal is to solve for x, remember, so we're going to have to go to the x word from the y word. What about the other equation? Let's just pretend that it's solvable, normal. y squared minus 2y plus 1 plus 1, that's a plus 2 equals 0. You can either use the quadratic formula or completing the square. It's not factorable easily, by the way. Um, if you, I think it's going to be like 1 plus root 2 and 1 minus root 2, is that right? Mm, 1 minus x. Hmm. I think 1 plus i and 1 minus i. Are those the solution? Anyway, something like that. Let's solve it. Okay, so the quadratic formula gives us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4ac, that's 4 times 2. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. That is the square root of negative 4, which is 2i. Okay, how do you find it? i squared is negative 1, so i is the square root of negative 1, or negative square root of negative 1 is i, but if you have a negative 4, that's 2 times i. Okay, and the plus minus takes care of both roots. There are two roots, we know that. So from here, y equals 1 plus minus i. So we got the following solutions. y equals 1, or y equals 1 plus i, or 1 minus i. But how do you go from this to the x world? Let's go back to our notes. Hopefully we took good notes, right? y is equal to 2x. Uh-oh. Then we can just replace y with 2x. If we do, we get 2x equals 1 plus minus i. x equals 1 plus minus i divided by 2. And from here, 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half. So we have one real solution, two complex conjugates, two complex solutions. That can happen. You cannot have three complex solutions if the coefficients are real. But you can get a case like this. You can also have three real solutions, but not one complex and two real. That's not one of the cases. Okay? Basically, a cubic equation a cubic polynomial with uh, real coefficients has to have at least one real solution. Why? Because if you think about how a, a cubic function acts, something like this has to intersect the x-axis. No matter where you put the x-axis, doesn't matter, you'll have always have an intersection point. Okay? You're not going to miss it. So, you can also write this separately like 1 half plus minus 1 half i, or you can even separate all the solutions, but that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI, and bye-bye.